Uh, let's discuss the speech further, and I'm joined by a member of President Trump's cabinet, the ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley. Was it a different tone, and was it meant to be different? It was a very different tone. It was presidential. It was meant to tell the world that America's going to lead again. And I think that he covered a lot of different things, whether it's cutting through the regulations and making sure that Americans get services faster, whether it's making sure that we have more jobs in America that are made by Americans, or whether it's with foreign policy, which is we're going to have the backs of our allies. We want our allies to have our backs. And if we have those that challenge us, we're going to call them out on it. Because I know some of your allies have been somewhat worried. I was in New York this weekend. I was speaking to an ambassador, I won't say who, but from a country that's allied to the United States. And that person said they were worried. Does the president have to sound like this now going forward for the next four years and drop the campaign style Donald Trump? I think it's time for him to change the tone, and I think he did that tonight. His goal is to unify the country. His goal is to let the world know that we're for peace and security, and that also we want to make more allies. We want to continue to work on anything that we can that's going to bring peace and stability in the world. And I think he made that very clear tonight. So a reset. I don't think it's a reset. I think what you're doing is you're starting with a new president and a new president that believes that America can be strong when we lead. You talk about new allies. One of those allies potentially could be Russia. Do you see that's a possibility? I mean, I know you had some initial outreach to your, to your Russian colleague who passed away recently, yes. Vitaly Cherkin. Um, do you see Russia as a friend or foe? They vetoed you uh, or the resolution that you supported on Syria chemical weapons just a few hours ago in the UN Security Council. I don't think they have to be one or the other. I think it depends on the day. Certainly, if we can get Russia to be with us, that's fine. But today, we were very upset by Russia not um, voting for the resolution that criticized Syria for using chemical weapons on their own people. We have criticized Russia for Crimea and Ukraine and, you know, for the actions they've taken there. So we'll call them out when we see something wrong. If we see where we can work together, of course we're going to try and do that. Staying on that issue of what happened today in the Security Council, it's clear that they, you set up a mechanism, it reported, it said that the government, Syrian government was responsible for using chemical weapons, and yet it's gone nowhere again, deadlock this? in the Security Council. Where do you go on that? It was amazing to actually look at the fact that we knew that chemical weapons were used in Syria. The entire Security Council wanted to find out who was responsible. The entire Security Council agreed on this joint mechanism that would go and find out exactly who did it. They spent a year of investigations. There were four instances. In three of the four instances, the Assad regime used chemical weapons on their own people. One of the instances was ISIS. They want to talk about ISIS. Japan and China didn't like the answer they got. The truth is the Assad regime literally suffocated to death men, women, and children. And Russia and China decided to cover for their friend instead of saying, we can't allow chemical weapons in the world. It was a bad day at the Security Council. A final question on Russia, and it's a question I think that's still being raised constantly here in the US, but it's also being raised internationally by some of your allies, and that's the contacts that there have been in the past between the Trump administration, of which you are now a very prominent member, and the Russians. Does there not now need to be a full investigation? You know, what I will tell you is my job is in New York. My job is at the United Nations. We have called Russia out multiple times for things that we believe are wrong. We are not afraid to do that, and we will continue to do that as we see fit. I think that they're trying to continue to bring something up about Russia here in D.C. I don't think there's anything there, but if they want to keep wasting energy on that, they can. We've got work to do. We've got international work to do. We want to focus on the things that we can change now. But isn't, isn't, it, isn't that being a distraction, though, and stopping that work and worrying some of your allies? Isn't it better to get it sorted once and for all? My allies know now more than ever that we've got their back. Israel has seen it. Ukraine has seen it. France and the UK have seen it. We're going to continue to show them that. And so I think, and they've seen us call out Russia multiple times. So I think there's nothing to worry about. United States is strong. We're going to lead again, and we're going to really show the world that we are about peace and stability. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us. Thank ambassador you. Nikki Haley, uh, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, a member of President Trump's cabinet, commenting on his uh, speech tonight, important speech tonight, to this joint session here on Capitol Hill.